Welcome to the Instinctive Influencers Podcast, a show where influence becomes one of your tools for success. Now, here are your hosts, Brian Weber and Ed Haley. Hi, I'm Brian. And I am Ed. And this is the Instinctive Influencers Podcast. Hey, Ed, how you doing, bud? I'm doing good. It's uh, good to be recording again. It's been a couple weeks. It has. You took a trip to Paris. Got a little time away with your wife, did you? Yeah, we did a Paris trip, and then the following weekend we went to Zurich in Switzerland, which I'll never go to Switzerland again, man. It's dollar for dollar. The exchange rate is dollar for dollar, but everything there is probably 20 to 25% more expensive, but the Swiss are okay with it. Like, I guess there's this happiness uh, measurement uh, survey that's been done, and Switzerland is like top five in happiness, but they're also like top five in the economy too, but. It, the prices are ridiculous, man. Like it costs us eighty five dollars for lunch to eat some cordon bleu and a chicken salad with a beer and a soda. <laughs> wow! Yeah, definitely stay away from there, man. You're beautiful, though. too much money. The Alps are beautiful. Really? Yes, breathtaking. Hey, so I do have a question for you. You were in the Paris area during the Tour de France. Did you get to see anything with that? No, because the part that ran in Paris was the next weekend after we were there. Oh, no way, man. Too bad, too, because I know you'd love it. Yeah, that would it would have been cool. But Paris was another thing. Like uh, anybody who ever says, hey, I want to go to Paris. If you don't take a week, you won't see Paris. It's just too much. Um, and I would also you, you definitely need to book your tickets to everything in advance. Like we went to the Louvre uh, and we got turned away because they were booked out for like four more days already. Uh, we did book Eiffel Tower and the Ark, and we got to go up in those amazing experiences. But yeah, if you anybody listening ever desires to go to Paris, you need a week and book everything in advance, or you you won't see it. And ride the scooters because that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> the scooters, what around the town? Yeah, the little lime kick scooters because uh, Paris is everything is a uh, train, and trains are all underground. So if you ride the train, it's cheaper. Right. It's not really faster because you're going to wait 15 minutes for a train, um, but you don't see anything. So for the scooter, yeah, I pay a little more. But when you're kicking around Paris, you're seeing Paris. So it was kind of cool, like rolling up. We went to the Diane Princess Diana Memorial. And as you're rolling up, you know, you got the river, the sign river there. And you can see the uh, the Eiffel Tower starting to kind of grow in the distance as you get closer. And it was really super cool uh, experience. I mean, it is a little more expensive, but. And it's the kick scooters, not actual motorized. Well, they're motorized, but they're the little kick scooters. They do 20 kilometers. <laughs> yeah, you guys just did the weekend, right? Yeah, we, we rode the train out on a Friday and came back on the train on Sunday. So I'm guessing like you, it's kind of a way to you get away from work and kind of unwind, right? Yeah, and so the train from here, it's called an ice train. It stops, but it stops for like five minutes at two places, and that's all the stops. Um, it gets up to 330 kilometers an hour which is uh, six, 12, uh, about almost 200 miles an hour. So it, it's rolling. Like that thing is moving um, two and a half hours to Paris. And where it let us off at the train station, our hotel, we could see the hotel from the train when we were getting off. So it's super convenient. Um, and I think we paid like 140 euro for the two of us to ride the train there. And you don't have to drive those six hours. It's so much nicer. Mm -hmm. I definitely think, man, we, we got to look at doing that sub show of the, uh... Haley's in Europe. Oh, man. Well, we're going to London next weekend. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, you know, and the reason I asked you about this, because you got to get away, right? You got to get away from work. And I knew you were having some stressful times there, yeah. here and there, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Did, did you feel like a relaxation and you just kind of, you were able to unwind and you felt good about it? Yeah, it wasn't bad. And I I enjoyed the train. And, and my wife and I even said, like, we were eating dinner before we come back. And she's like, I'm not stressed. Because I don't have to drive back. I'm literally going to get on this train and I'm going to sleep. And you throw on some music or an audio book and, you know, you're just you and your thoughts. And it's very mind clearing to be on the train anyway. So um, and coming back, you really you reflect on the trip and, and all the little silly things that were silly at the moment. You know, like our hotel room was super small, kind of Clark Griswoldy. Like, you, you know, I got in the lift and, and you can't turn around in the lift once you're in. So you got to like back out. So, you know, I'm backing out going, watch my hiney. So it's like, uh, <laughs> but you reflect on those little, you reflect, <laughs> you reflect on those silly moments coming back on the train. So it's very mind clearing. I, I enjoy it. I love riding the train around Europe. 
I, I just love the idea that you had a Clark Griswold moment. Oh yeah, no, it's definitely <laughs> uh, there. There are some moments because you know, and we were in not the most comfortable area of Paris. It was some unsavoriness to it uh, in that area. <laughs> but anytime anybody who's ever ridden a train knows, generally train stations are not in the best areas of a city either. Well, we definitely know where your uh, your relaxation is. It's on trains. Yeah, I, I love it, man. I've ridden a f- well, I, every time I go to the airport, if I'm going anywhere TDY, I take the train from here to the airport uh, rather than pay for like a shuttle bus or anything. Uh, I just catch the train to the airport. It stops at the airport. I fly out. When I come back, I jump on the train to come home. Well, don't be surprised when you get old and you're in a retirement home. I'm going to send you a train. <laughs> <laughs> my, hey. my daughter's not my daughter's not angry with me right now i'm not going to a retirement home as of right now oh okay okay yeah well i understand it's a threat that. though <laughs> <laughs> she holds it over your head no you know and it's funny um because today's show we actually doing an interview today and we have somebody here that um uh, can it kind of helps helps people learn to deal with these things and how to relax and how to become you know, a little bit more in touch with everything around them. And to tell you the truth, Ed, I think it, I'm, it's kind of like a selfish mode because then I get to talk to the doc myself here. Maybe she'll figure something out for me and straighten me out. I don't know. Um, we'll work it <laughs> out as we go. So, hey, you ready to get into this, man? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Hey, so ladies and gentlemen, we have with us today uh, Captain Pamela Holtz, Dr. Holtz. You'll hear us call her doc. Ma'am, go ahead and say hey. Hi, thank you guys for having me. Well, ma'am, this is the deal. We go right into it. Okay. We do straight into instinctive response. You get 10 questions from us. Okay. You've already looked over the list to make sure that they were good, but it doesn't matter. There's no holds barred now, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> All right, Ed, you want to hit the first one? Yeah, I'm going to get her going e- nice and easy. All right. Uh, most influential musical band. Uh, my favorite band of all time is Queen. Wow. <laughs> so did you like the new movie? I did. It was really good. Yeah. yeah. I thought I thought he plays the role perfectly. I like that. Yeah, I, I the you know, soundtrack like, to that movie and the soundtrack, Queen period, the music. Yeah. I, I shed a few tears during the movie, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I am during Toy Story. <laughs> uh influencing class or course that you ever took that you think, wow, that class or course, because obviously you're a doctor, you have a mm-hmm. PhD, the most influential one you think you ever took. I have been fortunate to have taken a lot of really amazing classes, but I think the one that probably changed my life trajectory the most um, was an undergrad. We had a retired Navy 06 at our university, and I did Army ROTC, so that was a required part of our core curriculum to take a class with him, and he was in the political science department. So I took civil military relations, which might seem like it's not that influential, but he was very flexible, and this was right when I was first starting to think about um, pursuing mental health, behavioral health, instead of going right into um, kind of being an, an officer. So he let me write a, a paper on military mental health. Wow. And I, yeah, for a civil military relations class, I was like <laughs> really impressed by that. But I writing that paper changed my life. Um, I really enjoyed researching for it, <laughs> researched for it in my free time, and then um, was pretty serious about wanting to be an Army psychologist after that so right there that's like what kind of lit the spark Mm -hmm. okay all right ed what you got brother all right here we go number two hardest physical event i know a lot of officers you know a lot of officers run and they do a lot of like crazy spartan races and stuff so i was really curious what your hardest physical event is probably the first time i did the baton memorial death march i did it by myself Oof, wow there was no one with me <laughs> so just yeah it took a little bit of mental strength just um beast going. mode <laughs> good night yes yeah i've never heard anybody say anything positive about that event uh except it's over <laughs> Ever. <laughs> it was difficult but wow yeah <laughs> yeah that's crazy. That's I mean that's a that's a physical feat right there alone. It's like when you got done, how did you feel? Um, sore. Just <laughs> all pain. over. Yes. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, if you could be from any decade, other than the one you know that you're from, mm-hmm. what would what one would you pick? Um, I would say the 1940s. I'd be Why? a nurse. Yeah. A nurse in the an 1940s. Yeah, I'd be an army nurse. 
Ed, Ed, you may like her more than you think, buddy. Yeah, hey. Th- that was my era, too. I picked that era because I'm curious. Actually, funny enough, I'm curious about the mentality of the soldiers that it took to land on the beaches for D-Day. And that's one of the reasons I said that 1940s Army era would be my pick, too. Mm-hmm. Aside from our current generation of soldiers, you know. Oh, yeah, of I'd course. They're a great yeah. generation. <laughs> Let's get your serving with them, right? <laughs> right? You know, so. All right, Ed, what you got, brother? All right, well, that was my third one that you used. So I'm going to um, <laughs> name a book you read that positively shaped you. Oh, wow. Um, I've read a lot of books, too, that are really um, – I think that's part of the profession, I guess. You just read a lot. But most recently, I really, really liked this book, Mindset by Carol Dweck. It's a very um, simple theory. She just talks about there's the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. And she just goes into great detail about these two different mindsets. Um, And so usually I think sometimes psychology books are, uh, there's not enough information to last for a whole book. But that one was really good. Wow. That's what was her name again? Carol Dweck. Dweck. Okay. Yeah. Book. Hey, we'll make sure we put that in the show notes. So if you want to look that up and see what book mm-hmm. that is, we'll link it to an Amazon or whatever. Uh, so, Hey, my next one is who would play you in a movie? Oh, wow. In um, a real life movie about you. Maybe Jennifer Lawrence, like the Hunger Games person. She's kind of a goober. So. Oh, she is. Like, she is. Have you seen like her interviews? Yeah, she's funny. I love her interviews because it's almost like she knows how to be a real person. Yeah. It's, it's, there's nothing fake there. Yeah, it like, would definitely be flattering to have her. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Ready to go, buddy. Uh, <laughs> she got me with the Jennifer Lawrence thing. Kind of. I was like, <laughs> all right. Well, she said goober. She was a goober. <laughs> All right. Um, so we talked about comic books and stuff before we went on the air. So since I, those are off the table, kind of, let's go favorite athlete. Peyton Manning. <laughs> I like you. Yeah. Awesome. Already. <laughs> that's, that's cool. Yeah. Well, just because he was a University of Tennessee guy. That's all. Yeah. His State Farm Peyton commercials Manning. are pretty hilarious, though. <laughs> <laughs> Anything yeah. he does with his brother is funny. Mm-hmm. That guy. Yeah, he's just he's just phenomenal as it is. Uh, let's see here. What's your favorite thing in your closet right now? Favorite thing in my closet? Yeah, like mine's my Jays. Oh, um, I would just say summer clothes. It's so hot here right now. Um, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> sleeveless shirts, sandals. Yeah. Something flowy, airy. <laughs> Anything that allows the air to flow. Yes. That's so humid. Yeah, I, I, I can tell you this. So I walked out, I literally just went grocery shopping before we came and did this. I walked out and I got, I got two little two little things of ice cream because I have to kind of regulate myself because <laughs> I can turn into a real big ice cream fanatic. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, please don't melt, please don't melt, please don't melt. Like I was seriously considering eating it in the car so it didn't melt. <laughs> Partly because I'm a fatty. But <laughs> well, I feel bad for you guys because uh, we just had our second week of summer and now it's in the 70s again. So I really feel bad for you. Uh, you should probably go to Germany. <laughs> Two weeks of summer a year so far. All right. I got to give you the, the, the last one. Now you've had a little bit of time since we kind of did the little pre-show talk. If you could have any three people dead or alive over for dinner, <laughs> who would they be? That is so hard. Um, I genuinely don't have an answer for this. We'll say Freud because he's a famous psychologist that I think is perplexing. Mm-hmm. Just puzzling. I'd like to meet him. We'll say um, Michelle Obama. I read her autobiography. It was also very good. And um, we'll say Carol Dweck, who I just mentioned the book well, by her. Go. So we'll See? just round it out with her. Hey, it's just a group of people talking about psychological things. Yes, yes. I like the randomness. I like the kind of the randomness of the picks. Because if you think back, Brian, when we did ours, I think it kind of was like, so for me, I was thinking about like, uh, I think one of mine was Leonidas and one was George Patton. And I was thinking how these guys would interact with each other. Yeah. And I think hers is more a random, just, I think the conversation would be different. And of course with Freud there, like it's obviously going to be a very different conversation. He may lead the whole conversation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to throw you an easy softball. One. Okay. What was the last fast food meal you had? Oh, Subway. It's right down the street from my office. So. Do you consider that? Do you consider that? Fast food? Because I don't. Oh, I don't know why. it's fast. I, I know. guess I consider I don't know. It's just, I I know. It's like, it's a cold cut sandwich normally. 
right? So I don't see it as fast food. I don't know why in my brain. I think of when I think fast food, I think French fries, burgers, chicken sandwiches, like stuff like that. I don't I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but you're right. It probably is. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I think you're adding like uh, you're adding stuff that's not necessarily good for you into making it with fast food or not. Subway is, but Subway is a gray area, Brian. It's a gray area. Like, is it fast food? Like she said, it's quick. Not this Subway I go to, but it's quick. <laughs> but it's not necessarily bad for you unless, I mean, you pile off a bunch of meat and junk and uh, and you eat footlongs all the time. Then maybe it's a little bit worse for you. But, yeah, I think you're grouping all those other things just because they're not good for you. That's probably what it is. You know, I will tell you, though, I started going and getting the veggie patty thing. <laughs> It's really good. Is it? It, <laughs> it doesn't it, sound good. It's so good. Like it is. <laughs> it is very good. It tastes. Okay. It tastes like a a weird burger, but <laughs> it's got corn in it. And okay, how do I say this? The corn is not dissolved whatsoever. <laughs> so does that make sense? Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, so we're gonna get into this. Let's learn. <laughs> let's learn a little bit about Doc Holtz and see yes. where she's from and all that stuff. And then let's get into some like some. Like how we help mm-hmm. people, you know, in, in your career professional, like where do we go with this? But first, where are you from, Doc? Um, I grew up mostly in Indiana. That's why you like yeah. Peyton. Yes, that's okay. why I like Peyton Manning. Go Colts. Um, <laughs> uh, went to undergrad at Loyola University, Chicago, um, did Army ROTC there, and then the University of North Texas for graduate school, and then Madigan Army Medical Center for internship hmm. and residency. And now I'm here. Wow. You know, it's a funny, uh, funny thing. I was mm-hmm. talking with a guy that just filled in for our commander, mm-hmm. Captain Wiggins. Mm-hmm. And he said, yeah, she was at school, my school. We went to school together. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I didn't know that. I was like, really? And he told me all this stuff. I was like, well, that's crazy. in that weird small world? Yes, it is. So, and Lowell, Lowell, right? Yep. Weren't they just known for something pretty big about the March Madness? Uh, you don't know, do you? No, I'm not a sports fan. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, it's Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they made it into March Madness, and they actually That's made awesome. a couple rounds through, and they have the little old lady who did the prayer for them each time. Do you, do you remember that, Ed? Oh, Loyola. That's my alma mater, the little old lady. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. I'm Lowell, Indiana, which is a city. Oh, I'm so way off. Yeah. There, yes, that's my alma mater. She, yeah. Yeah, she, um, she is a celebrity at Loyola. Um, really? Yes, everybody <laughs> knew her. Um, she's kind of... Yeah, she's Loyola. If you could wrap her up in a little package, it'd be a little. <laughs> she probably cat. they'll probably like make a jacket out of. Her yeah, like, oh, she's got so her weird. own like that's... Nikes, I think now or something. What? I don't know. They had somebody had some shoes with her on them. I don't know if they made them themselves. Yeah, they probably did because you get. You well, know, actually, you know what's funny is, um, and it's I was just looking at this because I want to get my kids put on some shoes, uh, <laughs> like Under Armour does it, Nike does it, but you can send a picture. Um, under Armour's icon and Nike's Nike ID, and you can get them to put a picture of somebody on a pair of Nikes. Oh, cool. Yeah, I know. I was like, I'm, I want to get my kids on my shoes. Yeah. I thought it'd be kind of funny if I showed up, like yeah. when I get to see them again, that I have shoes that That'd have them really on cool. it. But yeah, it's, no, I just, I thought it was kind of funny that you said, uh, it's Lo- Loyola. Loyola. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, it, they were like this Cinderella team. Yes. And they did really exciting. well. So, it was very yeah. Exciting. Uh, so you, You grew up in Indiana all your life? Uh, No. Uh, I was actually born at Fort Bragg. Are you an Army brat? I'm like a semi-Army brat. Uh, Started out as an Army brat and then we settled down. Really? Yes. Is that kind of like a thing that made you want to be a part of the Army? Yes. I come from a military family. I'm definitely the first female military person in my family. Wow. Um, But definitely inspired by a lot of my relatives for sure. Yeah. Ed, you got anything, man? I like the military history, like the lineage of families when it's like, you know, several generations have done it and stuff. I think I always think that's kind of interesting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, it's it's always funny, too, because like when you start talking to people, like how they pick their jobs, too, mm-hmm. is usually linked to family. You know, mm-hmm. if they have a history of infantry, mm-hmm. artillery, aviation and mm-hmm. family will tend to go that way. So, mm-hmm. well, that's definitely good. Cool. So yeah. you went to Lael and you did your undergraduate. Yes. And then you went to? The University of North Texas. Right, North Texas. I had a commander once. That's really? where he graduated from also. No way. He's an aviation colonel now. I, I don't Very know if he's retired cool. yet. I loved that school. Really? 
Absolutely. I don't think I had heard of it until I was looking at graduate programs and was attracted for a mentor there that I thought he had worked with military and Mm -hmm. um, firefighters and police officers. Um, But I was generally not excited to go to Denton, Texas, but I loved it there. I definitely recommend that university to anybody that's looking at very military friendly. Really? Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. And then you did, you said you did your residency. Mm Mm-hmm at Madigan Madigan what is Madigan like where is that Madigan's at Joint Base Lewis McCord it's the hospital up there um and they are an excellent hospital excellent facility excellent department of behavioral Mm -hmm. health and I received excellent training there wow so so with that after you finish that is this your first duty station oh okay cool (laughs) yeah you can definitely tell you have a fire in your knee (laughs) so yeah it's um it's definitely uh you always you tend to like your first one, but mm-hmm. you're like, you're in Korea. Yeah. Hey, this is awesome. This is and my first choice. I wanted to come Did here. you really? Yeah, I did. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's good. To, it's kind of good to get out and see the, uh, the rest of the world and mm-hmm. whatnot. That's what I've always enjoyed it. The crazy thing is most of my time seeing the rest of the world were for other reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were the greatest. But yeah, yeah and, and that's like with Ed, he talks about. They go everywhere in Europe. It's so awesome. But that is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, Europe. So, but that's the thing about Germany. Everything's really close. So I'm near Landstuhl, uh, Doc. So kind of give you an idea. So if you were at Landstuhl, it's like right on the border of France, Luxembourg, a couple hours of Switzerland. So it makes it so easy here to travel. Um, and we encourage soldiers to get out because some soldiers will be like, oh, there's nothing to do. And then we know that could lead to some other issues down the road but yeah that that's part of it i love the ability i did have a question though yes so i had a, a good friend of mine he was stationed at fort lewis mccord and he had a perception that there was a lot of um behavioral health concerns at fort lewis maybe the weather or something like that did you find it challenging there or did you i mean i know this is your first duty station but like in perspective like do you think that mccord was different or did you even notice um they do say that that region of the country does have more Mm -hmm. behavioral health concerns because of the weather i've definitely heard that and it's also a bigger base um with just a lot of soldiers and it's very family friendly for efmp too so there's just Mm -hmm. no limitations for types of folks up there so you definitely see a range of folks But overall, I think soldiers are incredibly resilient, Mm -hmm. and um, I've been so impressed with soldiers and their ability to cope with some pretty difficult missions um, and having to rotate different places and operate a very high level. Um, So, yes, there are some behavioral health concerns, but at the same time, very impressed. Yeah. You know, and uh, what I find what I find funny too, Ed, um, is because you brought that up about um, the region. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've heard of things such as like a seasonal depression, Mm -hmm. like some people, they don't get enough sunlight Mm -hmm. and they get depressed Mm -hmm. now. Like the winter blues. Yeah. 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 Is that what we're thinking? Is that what we're trying to talk about? I will have to admit, I was a little skeptical about it until I moved up there and I moved up there right before the winter. So I would work and just a regular work day, you wouldn't see sunlight and it would be rainy all the time. And it really does impact your, your mood. So, um, a lot of folks work even longer than a regular work day. So they just aren't seeing sunlight sometimes for like months at a time. And that can take a mm. toll. Yeah. It's kind of like being in Alaska Yeah, <laughs> at the wrong time of year. Yeah. So, or at the right time of year, it's nothing but sunshine. It's like, please go away. Yeah, and then you can't sleep, which is it's a whole other thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so one of the things that we, w- I wanted to talk to you about too, and, mm-hmm. and Ed will probably want to hit upon it is, so Ed and I, we are both starting to do this, I guess you call it meditation. Mm-hmm. I I don't even know what I'm doing at half the time. That's why I'm coming to a class that we're going to actually yes. have that we're going to be taking part in, it's, which I'm really excited about. It's coming up real soon yes. here in our, in our organization. Mm-hmm. Um, but mindfulness, like what is that? Like what are we, what are we looking for with that? Sure. So I'll share my favorite definition of it that comes from another psychologist, John Kabat-Zinn, um, and he defines it as paying attention in a particular way. And so that particular way is you're paying attention on purpose, mm-hmm. non-judgmentally, and in the present moment. Yeah, I say that's the same thing I've heard. So I recently read a book called 10% Happier mm-hmm. by Dan Harris. Mm-hmm. I think I told you about mm-hmm. this. And that was the whole thing. It's like, he said, well, I feel 10% happier now since he learned how to meditate 
be mindful mm-hmm. in the present and, you know, just be able to do that stuff. And that's like, and then Ed had told me, he started doing this thing, breathing in the morning. What is it you do, Ed? Uh, you know, she kind of hit on it. So I do, it's called the daily calm. It's a app that you can get. And I really, I, heard, I actually heard about it through, um, another podcast team never quit with Marcus Luttrell, the lone survivor. And, uh, the girl that does the daily calms, her name is, um, uh, hold on Tamara. I think it's Tamara Levitt. Yeah. It's like a 10 to 12 minute, just kind of focus on your breath. And then at the end, She'll have you relax your attention for like the last two minutes. And then she'll talk about something for that day to kind of focus on. And I find that starting your day with that, I can definitely tell the difference. Um, And then throughout the day, I'll think about whatever it was. She said, hey, let's focus. Why don't you focus on this today? And then all of a sudden I'll pop my head and be like, oh, I haven't been focused on that, but let's move forward. And and it's very uh, much a mindfulness, you know, focus on the breath. And then when you your mind wanders, kind of bring it back and center yourself and um, but since I've been doing it, I've been, it's been pretty good. I am looking at now trying to kind of get the, uh, Brian mentioned active meditation. So like you're doing something like maybe you're riding a bike, which I guess you kind of do because you have lots of thoughts and stuff, right? Like when we, when we ride bikes for distance, you know what I mean? Like you get into your thoughts. I know you can plan your day like that and stuff. So it's interesting. And, um, I think it's made a difference in my career at this point in my career, at least. What do you think, man? Yeah, I think there's a couple different ways to approach mindfulness. You can absolutely carve out a period of your day using an app. I recommend lots. There's lots of behavioral health apps that are funded and developed by the Department of Defense and VA that have um, mindfulness components, including mindfulness coach. Mm -hmm. Um, And you can use that app to help cultivate um, the mindfulness practice kind of in this carved out period of your day. And then there's absolutely ways that you can incorporate mindfulness into your day into what you're already doing and to do it a little bit more mindfully. And so then you don't have to necessarily carve out special time. Now that, that particular app that you're talking about, the mindfulness mm-hmm. coach one, mm-hmm. I actually have it up right now. Oh, cool. So is this something that we're going to use during this segment of the class or during the class to help us? So for the class, we'll be using a different app called acceptance and commitment therapy coach app that has some components from the Mindfulness Coach app. So the cool thing about these apps is there's tons of options that can fit um, kind of whatever you're looking for, and they're free and made for soldiers, so you can um, deploy or TDY or PCS anywhere in the world and mm-hmm. kind of have this in your pocket. Absolutely, yeah. And, and I pulled that one up, too, because mm-hmm. I – so I kind of cheat. So beforehand, <laughs> so audience, for those of you out there, she was by the office one day, and she told me about this, and I was like, this is cool. And she handed me this little piece of – it was like a, it almost looked like yeah. a, subs- like a prescription like a, yeah, tablet. Yeah, it's a prescription pad yeah. made by DHA. But it had like a ton of little apps on uh-huh. it. And I was like, well, and I picked a couple and it just happened to be one of them was the one that you told me about. Yeah. And then also the mindfulness coach app. Mm-hmm. But there, yeah, what I'm looking at is one, two, three, four, five little areas. Mm-hmm. It, and these are training is what they are. Yeah, some of them it's um, education pieces, so you kind of know why behind what you're doing. I think mm-hmm. it's really helpful when you know why you're doing something. Right. And then to practice it. Um, and then some other really cool modules in there, kind of learning your values, which we'll do that in the classes. Just take time and figure out who who am I? Wh- what's important to me? What kind of person do I want to be? Mm-hmm. When um, faced with a difficult decision, yes. what's guiding that? Um, and that way you can be someone that you're proud of, mm-hmm. even if you're in a difficult situation. Absolutely. You know, it's, and the crazy thing is, is so when people come to the organization, mm-hmm. I have to give them a brief, I have to mm-hmm. talk to them. And one of the questions, so we have to talk about army values. Mm-hmm. I have to do an army values refresher with them. And one of the things I do is I ask them, what's the one, there's seven, we're supposed to follow all seven, but what's that one that holds true to you? And they may say integrity or they'll say duty or, or they'll say respect. And I always, I always lead into how one, how that affects EO and also our sharp Mm -hmm. with a sexual harassment assault Mm -hmm. programs. Um, and how, if they find that in their foundation and they hold on Mm -hmm. to that and they just grasp on it the entire time, Mm -hmm. they'll actually be more successful throughout their tour here, you know, or they'll be able to stop a crime that could happen mm-hmm. possibly, or they could stop an incident or they can help a battle buddy out. But especially leaders, mm-hmm. I always tell them, I'm like, 
hey, please display that particular value all the time so someone sees that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that, that's what's great about it, too, because we're going to we're gonna actually going to dive into that uh, mm -hmm. during that class. I'm actually I'm going to be excited to talk about it on the show after I get involved in it with sure. a little soldier. Yeah. So, Ed, what do you think, man? Uh, so I downloaded the apps that she spoke of and, uh, it's interesting. I, so they're, they're, um, developed by the department of veterans affairs. And I thought I found that kind of interesting that that's who develops these things for the soldiers and for veterans. So that's a good message to get out for both of those apps, but I'm, I'm currently downloading them as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, as soon as she told me about them, I was like, yeah, let me check those out. And I'm sitting there get, rifling through all these different apps. So there are, uh, I, the funny thing is, is what I noticed about the mindfulness one, mm -hmm. I was playing with it and I noticed it's very much like the calm app. Now, I don't mm -hmm. know if I ever showed you the calm. Mm -hmm. app. I'm not going to open the calm app <laughs> because as soon as I open, well, no, maybe I will. Cause okay. it's okay. But I, you open up the calm app and the very first thing you hear, and this is what Ed was talking about. And you'll, it'll start, it'll tell you to Take a deep breath, and then oh, I hear the water. You hear this noise. Right? You hear it, yeah. It knows what it's like. And then, like down on the bottom, is a meditate, and there's the different mm -hmm. ones. And I, I do the like he said, the yeah. mindful. I try to do the mindfulness during the day thing, but I'm horrible at it. It takes practice. I will say that I would not consider myself an expert in mindfulness, but I think the cool thing about mindfulness is mm -hmm. even people I think are experts in mindfulness wouldn't call themselves experts in it <laughs> no. just because it's a constant practice. It's something that you are mindful of and that you incorporate into your day to day. <laughs> and that it's not something that you're ever going to kind of, um, just be like, okay, I've accomplished that. I'm excellent in mindfulness. Move on to the next thing. It's just something you practice. Um, and yeah, definitely into daily life. So I want to transition to something else with the interview. Mm -hmm. um, and this could probably be something you could speak upon. Ed and I are big advocates of about 22 a day thing. Mm -hmm. Really big advocates, the whole mm -hmm. suicide and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, being that your areas um, behave your health and to help yes. others. Mm -hmm. And there's a stigma someday. There used to be a stigma and we're trying mm -hmm. to get rid of that. Yes. You know, like it's okay to say, hey, can I talk to you? Mm -hmm. And we try to tell people all the time on the show. Yeah. It's okay. But uh, where do you think we stand with that 22 a day type thing? Or what, what are your thoughts on it, ma'am? Um, I think suicide is obviously one of the most heart-wrenching things that anyone can experience, whether you're grappling with those um, mm -hmm. thoughts yourself or that if you've been impacted by it, mm -hmm. it's um, devastating. And so if there's anyone kind of grappling with that, we want to make sure that we're helping people. Yes. And getting people that the help that they need. And I think the balance of trying to figure out how to be a soldier, active duty and ha balance your career and get the help mm -hmm. that you need. Um, oftentimes, I think people have the misconception that by going to behavioral health or by going to talk to someone that that will definitely negatively impact their mm -hmm. career. Um, and I consider that to be a pretty big myth. And I I haven't really seen that supported. Um, I think people think if they go to behavioral health, they will not get a security clearance. That's a huge myth. Yes. Very, very, very few people that have ever seen a behavioral health provider have any issues with that at all. I would consider that like, don't even have that a blip on your radar. If you're thinking about mm -hmm. coming to behavioral health, not even worth worried about. Yes. Um, and what I always like to say is if anyone's grappling with any kind of, um, just anything. Someone broke up with you or you're trying to end a marriage or you're feeling some anxiety or your sleep is kind of out of whack. And you're saying, I don't want to go to behavioral health because I'm worried that it will impact my career. I would say going to behavioral health has impacted um, way more careers in a positive mm -hmm. fashion yes. than it's ever hurt careers. I think behavioral health has helped people to get to the gym and work out so they can pass their PT tests or help people to wake up on time. So they're not making it to formation late and then getting counselings. And, um, I think we have benefited far and above mm -hmm. so many soldiers. And so, um, I would say and encourage everyone to, if you need help, I would say it's more than okay. It's, we genuinely see it as a sign of, um, a positive sign. It's a sign mm -hmm. of strength that someone in the military said, you know what? I could use some support right now. And you went and got it and you worked hard and now you're doing fine and you're back mm -hmm. in the fight. And I think um, we only view it positively. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, Ed, Ed and I talk often and Ed, I'm, I want you to speak on this more than me. When we talk about uh, Tim Ferriss and Jocko, when they talk about the darkness, you want to, you want to speak on that, Ed? 
Yeah. So first of all, I want to say that, um, you know, and she, she's right. Like if you got help, it's not a, it's not a weakness. And I was that soldier. So I was that soldier at one point, had some sleeping problems, whatever have you. And I was like, I'm not going to behavioral health. Like I don't need it. I'm good. My wife kept on and on. So finally I agreed to go, right. I said, Sorry. I'll go to behavioral health one time just to make my wife happy and show her I don't need it. And as I was walking in, I remember a mentor of mine was coming out, somebody I thought very highly of. And I was like, what are you doing? He's like, I had an appointment. And that kind of changed my whole perspective because this person I saw as this like excellent leader person was like getting some kind of an assistance from behavioral health, whatever it was. And I was like, I don't know. It just changed my, my whole mindset uh, about the behavioral health and the strength and weakness of it, you know, because, um, you know, and I, I, we've have, I mean, unfortunately in 21 years, I've had several instances where, you know, he talks, Brian was talking about the darkness, but there's instances where the darkness gets the best of the soldier. And it's because, you know, somebody didn't speak to him. So I'll give you an example. A soldier walks by my office every day and every day he's like, morning, sir. And then one day he doesn't walk by and he's got his head kind of looking at the ground. And I go, Hey, come here. He comes in my office and I start talking to him just about, Hey, what you do this weekend? Da da da. And I realized, okay, he's fine, but what if he wasn't? You know what I mean? Like that one moment could be the difference between him losing his fight with a, something dark or him getting some help or maybe just just that conversation relieved him of some kind of stress. So, it, so I think a lot, big deal for us in the military is to be aware of the people around us. And when they're not in, you know, acting uh, normal, be able to recognize it and be like, Oh, I need to just, let me just talk to them and you can find some things out. So and I, I think that's one of the biggest things with, um, you know, preventing those kind of thoughts and actions. Yeah, I, I do too. You know, and, and I don't want anybody to get this the wrong way. Um, we always take the term, the darkness. Um, so tool of Titans, uh, Tim Ferriss wrote it and he did an he did an interview with Jocko Willink and Jocko Willink. He talks about, he talks about the suicide 22 day and stuff and how, and he refers to it. That's what he refers to, to him. Like, so everybody has their own, like somebody may call it the silly clown in me. I don't know. Um, but we refer to it as a darkness. So we're not trying to like make a stereotype of that, but it, it's just how it's how some people feel. They feel mm -hmm. dark inside mm -hmm. and they need to lighten up or whatever, or it could be spending too much time at Fort Luce McCord when it's yeah. completely <laughs> dark all the time or Alaska, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, it's lots of different things. I can definitely say though that I've even also been one of those types of people mm -hmm. that you know that thought the same thing. Mm -hmm. I thought not that I would treat anybody different, but if I go and somebody sees me, mm -hmm. oh no! Mm -hmm. But I still went. I ended up going anyways because I felt like you know what I need to talk to somebody or something. And I will tell you, I use that. I don't talk about what was talked about, mm -hmm. but I use the methods that the person that talked to me. And so many counselings mm -hmm. as a, a senior and non-commission officer to juniors, it is amazing. And that's mm -hmm. why I wish people would reach out and say, how do you think I can touch somebody mm -hmm. if I'm dealing with this issue? You know, mm -hmm. and is that something that you all can like as behavioral health specialists can uh, or doctors can help people realize, OK, I have a soldier with an issue. How do I deal with this? Because sometimes we don't know how to deal with things emotionally, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. mentally, things mm -hmm. like that. What do you think, ma'am? Um, for how to help soldiers. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. I think, well, first you guys have touched on so many awesome topics. I want to kind of jump back. <laughs> Go and after. Say, um, one, I think re reiterating that it is incredibly important for those lower level leaders and um, friends and um, just anybody to kind of pay attention to the people around you and notice um if anything's just a little off, I think what people often do is they just don't really want to ask or comment because they think that it'll be taken kind of wrong or weird, or they just don't want to have a awkward or difficult conversation. And those awkward or seemingly awkward or difficult conversations are where true friendship and connection is made. Mm -hmm. And that's where you make lifelong friends and have lifelong mentorship relationships. And if you can kind of mindfully dive in, which is that mindfulness is that you're paying attention in a non-judgmental way. So you're not mm -hmm. judging. You are just being curious about what's going on with that person. Um, and really just kind of asking and seeing if you can help or pay attention. And I think it's meaningful to a lot of people when someone just 
notices. Yes. And then another thing I wanted to just say was that kind of speaking to what you said about it is very difficult to go to a behavioral health clinic. It is humbling to sit in that waiting room and to wait around all these other soldiers for your appointment, which is why it has always baffled me that it is viewed as a weakness. I view it as such an incredible sign of strength and courage that despite all of the kind of reasons that you have to not go to behavioral health, that someone still goes. Yeah. And that's, and that's why we, we've, uh, we've said it multiple shows. Hey, listen, if you need help, call somebody, if you need to talk to somebody, mm-hmm. do so. Um, I just did the day, I think you said the same thing I did mm-hmm. when you heard a senior officer in front of us saying, it's okay to go. Uh-huh. We don't frown upon it. And I was like, good for him. Mm-hmm. I'm glad he said that. Mm-hmm. Cause what that does is that tells people we're not against it. We want to support the mm-hmm. program. Yes. It saves lives just like having a good battle buddy system. Mm-hmm. It saves lives just like talking to family. Yes. It, it, there's so much that's involved in it that I I, I really enjoy it. The mm-hmm. fact that I know that we got a program that's about to start happening. Yeah. And she knows I sent out this massive email like to our entire company, like, hey, everybody come join me. And I got a bunch of people who replied back and she got people that yeah. had signed up for it. And it's like, awesome. We're going to do this class together. Yes. Now I got to figure out how to get you to the field <laughs> <laughs> at some point to yes. help us. Yes. Uh, but what are you thinking, Ed? Yeah, I think so. I'm excited about the program. Y'all are talking about the mindfulness um, kind of training program. I was just thinking, I wonder if I talk to my behavioral health people here, if I can maybe get something going here. Now here you're dealing with a lot of senior leaders too, but I can tell you reflecting back on me going to behavioral health and, and it was sleep stuff. I think it made me a better leader because then I had a better understanding what the soldiers were going to have to go through too, right? When they went to these appointments, I I had a little bit of insight as well. Uh, So I thought it helped. And, you know, every once in a while, if I have to, you know, uh, pull out the fact that, well, I mean, I've been, you know, to to counter that, no, it's weak sergeant argument, because that's probably one of the most ridiculous arguments ever is um, because Honestly, you can see it as weak, but, you know, I've also had soldiers who have attempted or completed a suicide. And, you know what I mean? Like if they had just not saw it as weak and went and got help, you know, you wonder what the outcome could have been in either direction. So I I think once you've been as a senior leader, I think I think it's great uh, experience. And then if it and it helps you, it helped me. I, I mean, I, I'm a professional sleeper now, so. We're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> that you are. Like he make, so we just have this thing. He used to tell me, hey, don't call me after a certain time. Because if you do, I'll be sleeping and I won't answer. And if you wake me up, I'll be mad. I'm like, great. <laughs> now, I don't know when to call it anymore because we're way our, our time zones are way out of whack. He's seven hours behind me. I have to sit there and count on my fingers and toes to figure it out. So, yeah. Well, you know, everybody loves smartphones for all these other like apps and stuff. I love smartphones because I can set do not disturb and I can pick and choose whose phone call will get through after eight o'clock PM. That's the greatest thing about a smartphone. I didn't know about that feature. That's good to know. Yeah. Oh, okay. but I have um, usually if I'm in the States, there is only, there's usually two people that it's whoever's my senior and then my wife, the only two people that can call me after I'm asleep. That's yeah. smart. So, but it's to help, you know, just <laughs> to tell you, that's one of the things um, I've been trying to monitor. Uh, and this may be something that you talk about earlier is, is the utilization of electronics mm-hmm. in the middle of the night, oh, right yeah. before bed. Mm-hmm. Like how bad that is for, you know, mm-hmm. in a sense, it creates this weird battle rhythm. It, it might- yes. <laughs> yeah. Sleep is so foundational. So we kind of want to treat that time, um, with the importance that it is, that it deserves. And I know that a lot of folks in the military have uh, different shifts or um, different demands that are really crunching down on their sleep time to begin with. So that Mm -hmm. when you're adding a smartphone into the mix, it's kind of chipping away at your sleep time Mm -hmm. um, when you already maybe had so little to work with. Um, It can have huge impacts, like even just missing, they've done studies that even even 15 minutes can really be Mm -hmm. noticeable um, so you want to make the most of your time. And if there's nothing important going on on your phone, you can go ahead and put that down. And that sleep is almost guaranteed to be more important than yeah. whatever video you're going through. So. Yeah. I, 
I've actually tried to transition. It's funny. I've tried to transition. So I will have my iPad and I set it on this box over by my bed and I'll try to watch and I'm, and you can't see it. I'm literally holding an iPad up in front of her so she can see it. <laughs> so um, I'll have it over there, but then I stop doing watching those at night. And instead I li- like, I have, um, I use uh, audio books. Mm-hmm. Um, actually Ed's brother, Charles, he taught me about this overdrive thing. Oh. And if you have a library card, you can actually link it to, Mm-hmm. that app and you can mm-hmm. download books for free. So now what I do is I have a little speaker by my bed mm-hmm. and I put on an audio book and I set the little timer for mm-hmm. like 30 minutes and mm-hmm. I go to sleep with somebody read me a book. It is so soothing. Sometimes. Yeah. I just discovered that app too. Um, <laughs> basically we want to just make sure people are doing things in bed. If you're doing it in bed that they help you fall asleep. Right. So that when you're getting in bed, you're not actively doing things that wake you up or make you more alert because in effect what's that, what that is doing is pairing your bed with being awake. And we break that kind of association of when you get in bed, then you feel sleepy. And so if you get in bed and you're scrolling through videos for an hour with this light right in your face, and then you're laughing and then it makes it harder for you to kind of get in bed and fall asleep. So Michelle, are you listening? That's my wife. (laughs) She knows exactly what I'm talking about. She's going to, she's going to kill me when I say that. It's pretty funny that you, um, it's pretty pretty funny. Like she's talking about that. And so when I was having my sleep issues, doc, that was one of the things was I have, I had a very busy mind when I would go down, lay down is like, okay, I got to do this tomorrow. And then, Oh, I didn't do this today. And one of the recommendations when I went was try to read something or, you know, not stimulate yourself so much. Uh, I had a Kindle, so I would put the Kindle with the shade so that the night shade, so it's not so bright And I would literally lean this Kindle up against my wife's pillow because I would go to sleep first and I would read till I passed out and slept. And my wife would come in, uh, turn off the Kindle and put it up every night. And that's kind of where the audio book thing was just an uh, evolution from that. But it made a big difference calming because if you're thinking about reading so much, you're not thinking about all that other stuff. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, it was one of the actually one of the things I got to help me start sleeping better. And if you've ever seen Ed, he's a big fella. He needs to sleep. He's like a big bear. Okay. Hey, I am faithful to my eight o'clock bedtime <laughs> every night. <laughs> that is. So I have a funny story about this whole bedtime thing that you mm-hmm. said. So it has to make you restful, right? Mm-hmm. Well, there I am. I have the Calm app on and it's running water. <laughs> I thought, oh, this is not bad. And then I wake up in the middle of the night thinking that there's running water in my place. <laughs> and at the same time, now it made me have to use the bathroom. So I'm freaking out, trying to figure out where the running water is coming from uh-huh. and trying to go to the bathroom at the same time. What's here in this That's country? That's hilarious. So well, I warn all of you, don't use the running water one. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah. So so what are some of the things mm-hmm. if – if we were to ask you like a generalized question, mm-hmm. what are some of the things that normal army behavioral health? And, and mm-hmm. I want to ask this because we also have civilians that listen mm-hmm. to us a lot too. And maybe it's something they could seek out mm-hmm. on the outside market. What are some of the things that you all offer oh, sure. for those who are seeking anything? I mean, I don't know what is you offer. So mm-hmm. what is it? We um, offer a lot. You can have group or individual treatments. If you kind of want to um, focus on things privately or here in Korea, you can meet friends by going to behavioral health and going in the groups. If you've got any concerns with depression, anxiety, sleep, a lot of people don't know that going to behavioral health is the number one kind of mm-hmm. course of action before going to meds. Mm-hmm. Um, adjustment to Korea. I mean, a lot of people, it's like, that's a huge transition to come to South Korea, um, right out of basic training in AIT, um, breakups, divorces, relationship concerns, just about anything that you could possibly think of. Um, a lot of it isn't necessarily like a, it's a problem. I think people are a, a diagnosis or a disorder or something. Mm-hmm. I think people think that if you go to behavioral health, that means that there's something wrong with you as a person, but oftentimes it's just, things that happen to everybody in life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just helpful to have someone to talk to, maybe someone that's um, not a family member or friend, if you want um, to kind of talk about it in different context. Mm -hmm. Um, So you can just kind of process things that everybody goes through. If you want to um, meet with a certain specialty in active duty or civilian, we've got all sorts of different resources available. Absolutely. Yeah. And and it's funny that you said that too, because Poppy, a lot of people do this and we, and they don't even realize it. 
For instance, Ed and I, we've spoke about on many episodes where he would come to my office <laughs> and we would talk. I would go to his office and we would talk. And we have a guy named, we call him the Bearded Ninja. Love the guy. Rick Williams is the best. Um, or we would get with him and we'd talk. And we never realized that was therapeutic in mm -hmm. nature. Yes. And it's doing the same thing, mm -hmm. but some people get worried, right? Mm -hmm. And they think, oh, well, they may tell somebody. Mm -hmm. There's a confidentiality thing too, right? Absolutely. I'm a vault. <laughs> Which means? Um, so there are limits to my confidentiality. So if there's safety concerns, I'm obviously going to make sure that we take measures to keep soldiers safe. But I do not share the details of what someone shares with me to anyone else. It's a kind of a medical, it goes in your medical record and mm -hmm. that is it. Um, there's no one where no one's having conversations. You don't have to worry about if someone, if you tell your behavioral health provider, if they're going to go kind of chit chat around. Right. Um, I do think people are very concerned about the issue of if I go to behavioral health provider, are they going to talk to my commander? Right. And I think that contributes a lot of times to the stigma of like, what's my behavioral health provider going to say to my leadership? And again, I like to say, if there are no concerns about safety, That's awesome. um, then that's not really yeah. um, a concern. Yeah. And, and, but if I were to ask you this too, cause, and I know you, you, you've only done it with the military so far, this is something that's on the outside too, right? Like civilian wise, they also, it's not like mm -hmm. a boss can mm -hmm. go to somebody's counselor and say, Hey, what did such and such say? That's illegal, correct? Yep. That's it, the civilian and the military are very similar in a lot of ways and different in others. So um, this is a unique organization where we are, um, involved in your holistic mm -hmm. care oh, yeah. and life. Like your leadership is kind of mom and pop at that point. Yes. Um, but even on the civilian side, if you said anything about safety, people want to make sure that you're safe. That's going to be a huge mm -hmm. concern. So, yeah, um, definitely. Ed, you got any more questions? No, I am just taking it all in. It's so crazy. I'm taking it all in. It's very interesting. Yeah. It well, is the thing where go ahead. I said, this interview is great. It's very informative. Yeah. It is. And the crazy thing is, it's like, we're not even scratching the surface of what can actually help and whatnot. So mm -hmm. the, I, I think what I'm going to do is obviously I won't talk about what's talked about in our group mm -hmm. class, whatever, you know, whatever we want to call it. But I think I may try to kind of share on mm -hmm. with Ed, but also with the audience, like some of these methods that we come, mm -hmm. we talk about, like whether it be the values mm -hmm. thing or how to lock into, you know, to being in the present and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Cause I'm, I'm not joking. Just the other day, I just told my wife about it this morning. I sat on the floor in my little living room. I have this recliner thing, and mm -hmm. it's and it's it's leather, so it feels cool. And I, I I left my shirt off for purpose. I was like, because I was really hot, so I was like leaning against it. It felt cool, and I thought maybe this is a good time to meditate. So I tried it. Yeah, that was horrible. It yeah. was. Hor it, I tried, but like I felt like because um, obviously I'm older, so yeah. sitting on a hard floor, <laughs> and then next thing you know, like I ha I tried to cross my legs, and then I was like, well, that hurts my ankles. I don't like that. And, I literally kept thinking about everything else, but what I was supposed to, but then like she said something and I was like, oh, and I listened to her and that was it. But it, I don't know. It's just Yeah. Weird. I think, I think a lot of people have misconceptions about what mindfulness means. And I think mm -hmm. people get in their heads a lot about if I'm meditating, if I'm being mindful, that means I should be able to empty my mind, um, or be in this pleasant relaxation state. And sometimes what mindfulness means to me is that you're being curious um, in a non-judgmental way. So let's say you're laying on the floor mm -hmm. and it's uncomfortable. You can just kind of notice in your body where that discomfort is. And we're not labeling it or being judgmental about it. We might label it in terms of like trying to find the right word for it, mm -hmm. but it's not bad or it's not good. It just kind of is what it is. Mm -hmm. And we're not trying to... Um, kind of sort it in the good or bad category, just feel it and experience it because um, life is going to throw a lot of really painful stuff our way. And there's absolutely nothing we can do to prevent pain from coming into our lives. Uh, you are correct. <laughs> <laughs> you can control some things, but pretty much part of being human is experiencing some yeah. painful experiences and struggles. And so um, all we kind of have control over after that is what, what do we do with it? Mm -hmm. And are we curious and mindful and make sense of it and try to find meaning in it mm -hmm. and then move forward from it with some more knowledge about ourselves and other people mm -hmm. in the world um, that's helpful to us? Um, or do we kind of just wallow in suffering and pain and how much it hurts? And so um, you can even be mindful with 
pain. If you're laying mm-hmm. on the floor in pain, you can kind of notice where in your that body. Then I won't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I won't sit on that floor like that again because that hurt. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Total, no, I mean, it makes so much sense. It really does. Because I also told you about like, so, there's been times where I sit in my car right before mm-hmm. I walk into my office where I would start my crowd, my calendar. That's something mm-hmm. we, Ed and I have been working mm-hmm. on together. Yeah. Uh, we we really seen, really seen, recently did a, um, actually just a couple mm-hmm. episodes ago about um, it was how, uh, no, great leaders have no rules. And he mm-hmm. talks about crowding your calendar. So one of the things I added to my calendar was uh, I tried to follow it, but a time to meditate. And I, I was like, well, let me try it right before I go into the office, kind of mm-hmm. clear my mind, mm-hmm. listen to what's going on and, and whatnot. I was really comfortable there. Almost yeah. fell asleep twice. Yeah. I'm just going to say. But, <laughs> uh, Ed, what you got, brother? Yeah. Um, so with the mindfulness, it is, it is like, uh, so what I've learned is, you know, through the meditation with uh, Tamara Levitt is you basically, you reckon, like she said, you recognize some, so like we do this whole, like, you know, notice your scalp and notice that tingle. And then, so it's all about noticing these things like, Hey, that's, that's anger. You know, Hey, I'm angry about this thing. And then how you handle it from there. Hey, that's anger, but it's not, you know, necessary. So let's let that go. So, and that's been helpful. Like really, helpful i deal with so i I wrangle captains all day ma'am so i try to get them to go do their med pros and go do their other stuff so there's times they i recognize the frustration and i'm like it's not that important to let myself get upset by the frustration let's just find a different method like one captain if i write it on his whiteboard really large he'll go get his eyes checked the other one, I just have to send him emails and send him emails every day until he does it. So you you, you recognize that what gets me, fr- I recognize the frustration coming and I'm like, okay, but let me deal with it. And then I feel so much more satisfied when I just let that frustration go and deal with them in their own individual special needed way. But <laughs> <laughs> he likes to talk about his captains a lot. Yeah, they, cool. are, they, they are good guys. They're just, they're, <laughs> I have to wrangle yeah. them sometimes. <laughs> You're going to say something there. Just saying, oh, yeah. I was going to say, I think a lot of people um, think anger is bad. And if they get angry, then that <laughs> is something that they need to work on and be less angry. Um, and I don't think anger is necessarily the problem. Like anger is actually pretty um, understandable and sometimes healthy. What we want to know is uh, we call anger a secondary emotion. There's always something else there with anger. So you always just want to be, again, mindful of anger. And why are you angry? And what else is going on? And then... Anger, feeling angry is not necessarily the problem. It's um, when you find yourself doing things that are not in line with your values because you're angry. Mm -hmm. And then you have to kind of sit with that and you're like, oh, that didn't feel good that I, you know, threw something or yelled at somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, But necessarily feeling anger, I actually think can be really valuable because it helps you uh, learn some important um, things and gather some important data. Yeah, I, I, I definitely have to agree that, that, that you feel it, mm-hmm. but it's being careful not to project it the mm-hmm. wrong way. Yes. Say the wrong thing to the wrong people. Yes. Turn it into something physical, mm-hmm. uh, things like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I definitely I like that because I personally, I love to find that anger when I'm in the gym. Like, yeah. Because that's yeah. what fuels my fire. And Ed knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's that's a – so when she said anger is not necessarily a bad thing, that's immediately where I went. So, like – if, if I attempt something, let's say a deadlift, all right, and I attempt a heavy deadlift and I don't get it, I get angry about that, but I use that to fire me up for the next attempt to hopefully get it. And if I don't get it, then I'm just taking my ball and going home. But I try to, but you can use that anger to to fuel something, to fire yourself up. I mean, uh, in sports, we see it all the time. They get mad because they missed that shot. And then they, you know, some people just go crazy and all of a sudden they're just uh, performing way beyond what they normally would. Cause they're using that anger as a fuel. So yeah, it's, I agree. It's not necessarily a bad thing all the time. It's which, how you use it moving forward. Do you punch a hole in the wall? Okay. Well, that's probably not a good thing. There's something else going on probably too. So yeah. I, and that's with you know, all negative emotions or experiences it's kind of i think a lot of people want to avoid it they would just want to not feel angry not feel sad not mm-hmm. feel down and if i could just avoid that all that part of life that'd be great um but by cutting out all the kind of the negative we cut out all the positive as well mm-hmm. and so it's just what do you do with that negative do you experience it learn from it do you channel it at the gym do you do something helpful with all that right 
um, or do you do something that you feel kind of wow that you know that makes me think about that like all the emotions we feel Mm -hmm. like all these different times we should use those Mm -hmm. in whatever means we can to make things better obviously Mm -hmm. versus I don't want to get rid of it because Mm -hmm. then I become numb Mm -hmm. and numb makes it worse actually yes so wow that's that's awesome yeah it's it's kind of what we'll talk about in the class essentially is um, not trying to not be sad or not feel down or not be anxious it's being those things and at the same time making choices decisions and doing things that are in line with your values so that you're no matter how I felt in that moment even Mm -hmm. if I was sad or if I was really down um, I still wasn't a kind person or I was still a, a faithful leader and um, that's pretty cool to be able to say that about yourself, that even if you're feeling pretty low, you you did something in line with your values. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. And you know, the funny thing is, is by the time this show releases, we'll already gone through that class. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's funny too. So yeah, we'll already have gone through the class. So actually, by the time that happens, I'll, maybe I'll get to speak. It'll, we'll see. We'll see where it goes, <laughs> okay. but definitely. All right, Ed. Hey, do you got anything else for Doc here? Because she's probably got a see some paint no it's saturday, saturday. we don't do anything today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it's been excellent um having you on um uh, captain holt uh very good interview I- i've enjoyed every moment of it i've found it interesting and i've learned something thank you guys for having me yeah yeah and well i mean and if you think about it so the show is in- it's called instinctive influencers but we think about this is we talk about influences from all direction mm-hmm. and I think behavioral health is an influence, Mm -hmm. but how we deal with it is an influence, Mm -hmm. you know, all these different things. So our internal being, our external being, all that stuff, I think it it helps, it helps people to become better leaders, better performers, mentors, whatever it is, if they can understand themselves and those around them. Mm -hmm. And so that's, and that's one of the reasons why we Mm -hmm. asked you on. Um, Plus when you told me you're going to do that class, I was like, well, let's talk about that. (laughs) All right, Ed, you ready to get it? You ready to do a, Throw something out there for the audience to get done. Oh, am I supposed to have the task? <laughs> oh no, no, I, I got okay. it. Okay, actually, my, I, I, uh, my wife spoke to me this morning, and she told me that although the tasks are nice, she said don't make it like they have to write a paper online. So I figured, hey, what's an easy task? And other than, hey, go on there, go to your app store, yep. find the ACT coach, or find the mindfulness coach. And they're both provided by the, the Veterans Affairs. Is it Veterans Affairs? Um, it was either the Veterans Affairs or there's the DHA Connected Health, which is a DOD agency. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think if we, you go on there, check those out and just see what those are about. Uh, they actually, it goes, it takes you through steps on mm-hmm. stuff with one. I want to say it was the mindfulness one. It actually mm-hmm. takes you like mm-hmm. a day by day type thing. So go on there, check it out. And then uh, just let us know what you think. Let us know what you think. So download one of those two apps at least, and it's kind of give us an idea of what you think about it. Um, but other than that, I mean, that's an easy, I think that's an easy task. The only other thing I would say would be for audience to share this with other people, share this show and to help, help us create a better stigma um, about how we can support our uh, behavioral health, whether, whether it's in the army or it's in the civilian side. And that way we can kind of, we can, turn a, uh, make a positive light upon this. So people aren't looking down upon it. Um, you can definitely find us, you know, where to, t- you know, where to find us at is one zero one influence on Facebook, Instagram. You can find us also on Twitter and then Ed and I each are, are on LinkedIn. So look us up, uh, chit chat with us. We're always open to, uh, questions. Ed, I do have something I wanted to bring up to the audience. I want to see what you thought about. Uh Oh, you know, buddy, we're coming up on, we're coming up on 50 shows soon. Oh, it's almost time for Q&A. Yeah, so we need to ask for some Q&A questions. Excellent. Yes, Q&A. Yeah, so this is what I'm thinking. Ed. This is what I'm thinking. So what we'll do is we can leave it open on the Facebook page, but also if somebody wants to uh, personally message you and I with a Q&A message, it can, and, and uh, those of you in the audience, anybody that has a question, it could be about influence. It could be just a personal question you have for Ed or and I. It could be about the show. It could be about the things we've talked about even on this show or other shows. But the Q&A show will be coming up, uh, well, not too far for us, Ed. Uh, we're, we're getting close because this is this is episode 39, so we're right down the road. Uh, we'll probably be recording it probably within the next few weeks, probably two to three weeks from this show, and then it'll be coming out. So 
the Q&A show. It's built off of you, the audience, and then Ed and I will answer those questions. What are your thoughts, Ed? Uh, mainly, I just want to say, like, you know, in my example, talking about that soldier I speak to every, he speaks to me every day. Like, don't be afraid to just speak to somebody. You know, talk to somebody. You could be helping them without realizing you're helping them. Or they could be helping you. Uh, maybe you're going to have that bad day. You know, maybe if he walks by and I don't speak, maybe he comes in my office and says, hey, what's going on? You, you good? Uh, uh, what you do this weekend? You know, so just don't be afraid to, to be social in your workplace and, and get to know people. Um, you could be helping them. They could be helping you. So especially when you're in a difficult situation like you guys have over there in Korea right now where you're, you know, you're away from your family. It's like that's important. It, I know Brian. I know his love for his family. I can very much see there's probably days that Brian comes to work and he's just not the same guy. So just talk to him. It's funny you say that, Ed. Um, I just told somebody the other day, I went to Chili's. And, do you know there's a Chili's in Osan, man? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that until like just recently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited about that Chili's. Oh, man, I'm telling you, it's amazing. So I told somebody just the other day, I, I go to Chili's and I – Dad, I don't need salt in the food because I cry in it. <laughs> oh, poor guy. No, I'm just joking. No, uh, no, it is. He's right. And that's it. That's what it's about. It's getting to know other people and helping those out. And the funny thing is, is you probably know the people you work with better than their own families at times because we spend so much time with them, and whether it be a civilian or being uh, in the military. It doesn't matter. Just keep an eye out on them, you know, and, and if they seem like they need something, help them out send them in the right direction uh other than that i have nothing else for us ed yeah no i I, that's another one in the bag there brian we're we're another episode in thank you very much for joining us today we loved having you on yes thank you for having me awesome with that i am brian i am ed this has been the instinctive influencers podcast thank you so much for listening have a great day